when I come up Skyway, which is the main thoroughfare here on the ridge, it doesn't feel good. It's depressing to think that what you came for is no longer here. The whole community's gone. I mean, everything's gone. This is George Gold. The first time he drove this road up the ridge into Paradise, California, he fell in love. He bought a house just north of town in Megalia. That was 12 years ago. Retired and divorced, he thrived here in a small, tight-knit community that shared his love of this once beautiful place. One year after the campfire, everything here has changed. There are signs of optimism or perhaps boosterism everywhere, but George doesn't believe the hype. I just don't go for propaganda, you know, this whole Paradise Strong stuff. All of us are wounded, we're walking wounded, so trying to be strong is not easy. George, I'm Juliet. Hi. Nice to meet you. I met George at the site of his old home, now scraped. So this is it? Yeah. This is where my house used yeah. to be. George loved everything about his humble home high in the forest. The quiet, the isolation, and especially the trees. He didn't want to live on asphalt anymore, and the price was right. Three bedrooms and 1,800 square feet, he couldn't have afforded anything like it in Sacramento or San Francisco. I mean, it was a really nice setup. I had a big deck out back, and I could sit on the deck, watch the sunset. His last sunset on that deck was November 7th, 2018. The following morning on November 8th, just after sunrise while he was still sleeping, the campfire started racing toward him. What happened next was unimaginable. In four hours, the fire ripped through Paradise and Megalia, burning over 153,000 acres, the size of Chicago. It destroyed 18,800 structures, 14,000 homes, including George's. The fire spread at its peak 80 football fields a minute. Holy shit. People don't live in their cars. Oh my God. It's okay. What should we do? We gotta get out of here. And 85 people died, many in their cars trying to evacuate the narrow single lane roads that lead to Paradise's Ridge. I don't want to die here. I don't want to die. <laughs> when I drove down the hill and everything was still burning, my house was still burning. I thought, hey, this is it's never going to recover. But if I drive up now, there's so much that's changed. I mean, all the junk has moved out and all the burned out cars are all in one place. It is a community trying to rebuild. But is that the right answer today when the earth gets warmer, the soil drier, and the fires deadlier? For decades, as citizens moved farther into natural areas to take advantage of the privacy, beauty, recreational opportunities, and affordable living, the idea of the wildland urban interface, or WUI, came into being. Developers and planners believed that humans and the wild could coexist, that a balance could be achieved. That belief is now being put into question. One of the things I've learned over the last year is that along with everyone else, I think I was pretty stupid. Those of us who just came here because it was gorgeous and made our houses pretty and did our garden and so on is not enough. If you want to live in that close environment to nature, you have to learn how to live with nature and not try to conquer it. That question of whether people can live in balance with the forest, with the wild, is one that is being asked by every person in paradise. As Paradise rebuilds, it is faced with how to do so in a way that protects people while still respecting the land. It is not at all clear that can be achieved, but not for lack of trying. So first, how can we build and maintain homes to withstand fires? Callie Jane DeAnda thinks about this a lot. She is the executive director here at the Butte County Fire Safe Council. We met her at her office in Paradise. What are you recommending now? 
As far as the yard goes, what we're looking at is a really um, clean space, first five feet from the structure. You really want to keep away anything flammable, trash cans, storage, furniture, plants and fruit trees need to be well spaced out and the most critical part is that they're well watered. A well watered plant is going to be able to resist the embers and not burn up as readily as something that's been dried out all summer. While Callie Jane talked in terms of zones to protect ourselves, a home ignition zone, a defensible space zone, a wildland reduction zone, it turns out that even her office was not ready for prime time. So this is a great example of something that we should not be leaving next to the siding. Get everything off the yeah. side of the house. Wow. Just, we just don't want to lean stuff up against the house. That seems to me to be a no-no. Yeah, so tomorrow is the office cleanup day. Okay, okay, yes. okay good. Looking at the bigger picture, Paradise has a problem. Over the years, the forest here became a tinderbox. Too many trees, too much brush, too thick with fuel for a fire. It is an unintended consequence of decades of aggressive wildland firefighting, which interrupted a natural cycle of smaller, less devastating fires. As a result, young trees and underbrush cram unnaturally close together. And that's what turns a fire into a raging megafire, like camp. So for people to live here safely, they need to make the forest look more as nature intended. Think about it as though you want to ride a horse through those trees, and that's how thinned out you want it. Trevor Sherman coordinates the tree removal process with homeowners for the council. When people here talk about thinning the forest, right, to sort of protect paradise, what, what do they mean by that? We're just trying to help show them that in order to slow the progress of the fire itself, this is what you need to do. It's surprising and counterintuitive, but thinning works. Callie Jane took us to a section of forest that is a case in point. Not long before the campfire, volunteers cut down and removed trees and the overgrown underbrush. The remaining trees were singed, but otherwise fine. The idea of this project was to make sure that the forest would survive a wildfire. And in order to do that, the trees need to be spaced far apart and those younger shrubs and other trees needed to be removed. Thinning removes what is called the fuel ladder from the forest floor to the canopy of trees. In addition, the canopies of these trees are farther apart, so the fire can't move from one treetop to the next. Fires need fuel to spread. Deprive them of easily accessible trees and they can be slowed and therefore managed. So this is the forest of the future. If we want to live with the environment, this is what it has to look like. Yeah. Yes. As the community focuses on home safety and tree thinning, it is also grappling with its geography and topography. Paradise sits on a ridge 2,000 feet above sea level. Only a few narrow roads lead in and out. Smaller residential areas throughout the town are dead-end streets. Imagine these lanes on fire. Journalist and filmmaker Miles O'Brien was here during the fire. He showed me the evacuation routes. It was just stunning. It was scary as hell. And as we're driving, we are the only ones in our lane coming in, and there's this absolute epic evacuation in the other direction. People with trailers, with their pets, with their families, with their household possessions. Many of the 85 people who died were trapped in their cars as the fire rushed in. Today, they are stacked up along that narrow road, a car morgue for potential use in any future court cases. One of those trapped in traffic was Doug Teeter, Butte County Supervisor. He barely made it out alive. And now he's trying to think of ways to improve his chances next time. Would there be any fast way to evacuate Paradise? To evacuate uh, 40,000 people from this ridge 
would take one heck of a road. Yeah. And even if you could make it four lanes in two directions, it's still not enough. Yeah. One car breaks down, two cars break down, runs out of gas, whatever. Yeah. You know, it's all gonna get choked up. The best that Doug can hope for? Wider clearings along key roads, a way to keep the flames at bay. It might be safer, but it is terrifying to imagine trying to hunker down surrounded by fire. But laying down more asphalt is not in the cards. You know, unfortunately, governments have limited funding, but I think what we could do now is to accept that we need certain clearances. So if a fast moving fire catches us off guard like that again, we could be safe in our cars on that road. But even if all these safety measures are implemented, there may be one final element that tips the scales against remaining in paradise. Climate change. We tend to think of climate change as being about stronger hurricanes or sea level rise, but it's impacting fires as well, making them larger and more frequent. Of the 10 most destructive fires in California history, six occurred in the 13 months prior to the campfire. What you see is the dry is getting drier, the hot's getting hotter, and the wet's getting wetter. And so you get a little more precipitation in the winter, more rain than there used to be because it's warmer. And then you've grown a lot of new fuel for the fire in the winter. It dries out over the summer, the winds come in, and all you need is one spark, and it doesn't take much to start what we saw. What started the campfire? It all happened here. There's a high voltage power line which goes to these canyons. High winds came through this canyon and it blew one of these wires off of one of these towers and it dropped an arc on the very bone dry underbrush. And it was off to the races. To be more resilient, communities are going to have to change. And what that means for people who are drawn to paradise is that their experience with nature will change. And at some stage, we may just have to ask ourselves, when does the best kind of resilience just mean retreat? Paradise had one of the most well-developed and rehearsed emergency management plans around, really throughout the state of California, in anticipation of a fire and a rapidly spreading fire. Those plans couldn't keep up with where we are today with climate change. Jesse Keenan is a faculty member at the Graduate School of Design and the Kennedy School of Government at Harvard University. He was an advisor to government officials on disaster mitigation, recovery, and climate change in California, including in Butte County. Are we at a stage where we should rationally look at an area like Paradise and say parts of this area should not be rebuilt? Yeah, I think we're at that stage in a number of different communities and geographies around the United States where we shouldn't be putting future people and kids and our grandparents at risk in areas that we know we, we really can't do much to prevent or save their lives. And that may mean ideas of managed retreat. Managed retreat. It sounds so benign, so agnostic, but it is about our communities and survivability in an age of climate change. Managed retreat is what it means to guide people as they transition from one place to another, from a place of high risk and hazard to a place where they can envision future lives without the existential threat from climate change. Paradise is still home to about 3,000 people. Slowly, some people are returning, building, regrouping. A critic might say that they are stubborn or blindly optimistic. After all, there is no doubt there will be more fires. But to them, this is their home, and they have no concept of what it would mean to leave. I'm a big proponent of, yes, we need to be living here. And I think that our role is to be the stewards of this land. So really, fire isn't the problem, it's more how we're approaching our stance towards it. And so I, I just moved my family to Paradise two months ago, and um, I think that it's a hopeful future for this town. But it's hard not to see the retreat is already happening, one household at a time. And George Gold, who already deposited his insurance settlement check, will not be returning. 
If someone was to present me uh, some scenario that was really positive and showed possibilities, I'd consider it. But right now, you don't have to be an environmentalist, you don't have to be an engineer to see that it's going to take years for this community to be anything like it was before. And it's not going to be like it was before. The old paradise, how it was built, maintained, and grew, eventually became unsustainable, unsafe. The town will rebuild, but it will never be the same. It most certainly shouldn't. For my radar, I'm Juliette Kayam.